Welcome back, everybody. This is Derek Kirby with the Dallas Prospect, back with another Mavericks post-game show here. The Mavericks got themselves probably the most satisfying win of the season, at least for my money, last night, going to Miami and beating the best team in the Eastern Conference, at least as far as record. The Miami Heat came into the game as the number one team in the East, and the Mavericks slayed the beast 107-99. to few things here that are really interesting to me this was it's a master class by maxi kleba particularly in the second half but i'm also going to give you a ton of credit and heap a lot of praise praise that from me is probably overdue for jason kidd and this coaching staff the halftime adjustments and defensive adjustments specifically were nothing short of masterful The Mavericks allowed 59 points in the first half, 40 the rest of the way, 19 in the third, 21 in the fourth. Luka Doncic didn't even have to score in the fourth quarter for you to still win by eight points. This is, it's a a beautiful job by the Mavericks. Maxi Kleba probably had the best game, certainly of the season. He's been up and down. Certainly of the season, but I would argue within the last few years, probably the game of his life, arguably, he was everywhere. You want to talk about what Maxi's skills should, if you put them all together, amount to, and like you have this idyllic version of him and what his ceiling is? This was him in every phase of that image delivering. 19 points off the bench, six rebounds, Five blocks, even a steal. And in crunch time, he put the clamps on Jimmy Butler. Butler could get no separation. He was poking the ball away. He was making him scratch and scrape and claw for everything he got. Now, Butler still got uh, 29 points and like 10 assists or, excuse me, rebounds. But even still, Butler got 14 of those points at the line. Maxi was phenomenal. He was chasing down guys on fast breaks, blocking them off the backboard. He was breaking up alley-oop passes that were surefire dunks waiting to happen that could have swung momentum. And then with like 32 seconds left, he hits the dagger three that effectively ends the game. Maxi was sensational. Career high in uh, blocks, I believe, with five. Career high in free throws, made and attempted, 6 of 8. And he was 3 of 8, shooting threes. You saw it all in this game. He hasn't been healthy the last couple years in the postseason. He's been an SR Kawhi stopper. But he's still our best defender that we've had. And you see, when he's healthy and right like he is now, you see what he can be. The problem is, he's 30. Health has been a problem. He's probably not going to get healthier. But when you have it all, this is what you get, and it is phenomenal. Maxi Kleba, almost single-handedly on the defensive end. Now, that's not to take credit away from the, the rest of the team or the coaches. The Mavericks gave up, like I said, 40 points in the second half after giving up 59 in the first half. Miami just imploded with what they were able to do. Instead of being able to enforce their will, Dallas just picked them apart, and it was really nice to see swarming defense, making Miami fight for even what looked like it was going to be easy baskets, not giving up on any plays. Really good stuff. Now, Miami, defensively, Miami trapped Luka Doncic like crazy, double teamed him, made him throw out. Luka ends with six assists, so you might look at it and say like, yeah, six assists, three turnovers, eh, ho-hum. But he made a lot of good passes that led to the pass, what, what we call hockey assists. The best example of that comes on Maxi's dagger. He makes the pass to Dwight Powell at the free throw line, who then kicks it to Maxi for the wide open look. Luca sets up the play. That was a lot of what we saw from Luca. Now, offensively, Luca struggled to shoot the ball. Five of nineteen. One of his probably bigger struggling games shooting the ball in this. But he still had 21, 10, and six. So a still good night from Luca. Granted, Miami and he they've done this pretty much his whole NBA career. They just refuse to let Luka beat them. They're like, dude, it's going to be someone else. I don't care. It's going to be someone else. And last night it was. 
couple other quick notes here. We had the Maverick debuts of Spencer Dinwiddie and uh, Davis Bertans. Bertans in 13 minutes had 12 points. And how many... I think he had like three or four rebounds as well. Um, and an and one dunk. That was crazy. The dude in 13 minutes got up seven shots. Knocked down three threes. And knocked down um, the fast break dunk for the and one. Bertans had uh, three rebounds. Four of eight shooting. Three of seven from range. And really good stuff there. Bertans now, he is a defensive liability. Don't get it twisted. But you saw, like, all right, if you're going to give us a big that can space the floor and shoot, you're going to allow us, as my voice cracks, and I revert back to my teenage years, you're going to get an opportunity to stretch the floor, space things out. Suddenly, you've got the ability to play a four-out offense like you would ideally in today's modern NBA. Hell, the second half, the Mavericks ran a lot of five-out offense, and it worked really well. Now, Spencer Dinwiddie, a much more humble debut for the Mavericks, Four points, but I did like that in 23 minutes off the bench, he had five assists. He was still a factor. And I loved, didn't think I'd see this very much, but I love that we got a glimpse of Luka, Brunson, and Dinwiddie together on the floor together. Like, having three guys capable of creating, not just their own shot, but for others, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mentioned earlier that Luka didn't score in the fourth quarter. The Mavericks still won that quarter 26-21. Brunson had nine, Maxi had 10, Dorian had five, and Dinwiddie had two. Ridiculous. Bobby Crella points out on Twitter that the Mavericks, since New Year's Day, are now eight and two against teams over 500. To give context to that, prior to the new year, they were six and 11 against teams 500 or better. That's significant. You know what else is significant? The Mavericks have now beaten five teams teams this year on a win streak of at least five games no other team in the nba has done that to give further context denver november 15th on a five game winning streak dallas took them down 111 101 memphis on a five game win streak 104 96 back in december uh that was december 8th chicago on a at the time nba leading nine game win streak january 9th dallas took them down 113 99 Memphis now riding a franchise high 11 game win streak. Dallas took them down 112 to 85. And then last night 107 99 over Miami. That is impressive. Almost as impressive. Mark Followell has this gem on Twitter. The Mavericks now have a league high 11 wins when trailing in a game by 10 plus points. They trailed by 13 in the second quarter last night and came back to win. Great stuff there. Also love that now with this win, the Mavericks are back to 10 games over 500. To give some context to that, I mentioned earlier New Year's Day, right? The Mavericks in the new year, not just teams over 500. Like, you might look at that and say, like, okay, great, but how are they doing overall? That's great that they're doing that against teams over 500, but how are they doing overall? Since New Year, Mavericks are 17-6. and six. Since the Sacramento game at the end of last year, last calendar year, um where like a 29% three-point shooter for his career hits a wide-open three to beat them. Since that game, Dallas is 18-6. and six. That loss dropped them to two games below 500. They now sit 10 games over 500. I almost have whiplash trying to like get from there to here as I just run through all this and keep up. Really impressive here. Uh, in this game, I said Dorian was on, or excuse me, I said that Maxi was on fire. Uh, Davis Bertans sniper in the minutes he got and it's the smallest sample size possible for him so I'm not going to get my hopes up I had said I had no expectations I'm not going to now say I expect the moon everything we thought KP would be and more no 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 but Maxi, like I said came off the bench doesn't matter he played 35 minutes doesn't matter he started the second half he had 19 and Bertans had 12 they alone outscored Miami's entire bench. Miami's entire bench had 25. The two of them, like I said, 19 and 12. That's going to win you a lot of games. The Mavericks have also now held six top 10 offenses under 100 points in this single season. That is impressive. If you're wondering if this defense is legitimate, I assure you it is. 
If you're wondering if this defense is smoke and mirrors in the absence of KP, I assure you it's not. Now, is it going to hurt a little bit on the rim protection side? Yeah, because you're not going to get this maxi every night. You're just not. I wish you could. I would lose my mind if you could. You're just not. But when you have it and it's there, it is damn satisfying to watch. This team isn't quite there. I said, I think this is a team capable, health permitting, of getting out of the first round. They are a talented roster. They have a great coaching staff. I say that eating all the crow in the world uh, for my criticism in the past of Kidd and his staff. But I said the KP trade wasn't about the move. It was the move that opens doors to other moves. I still believe that's the case. But I really like what I see here with the composition of this roster. I think they're still in need of a true number two. We'll see what they find for that maybe in the offseason. I know they're going to be a bit limited. They're financially strapped, obviously. They didn't get cap relief, and they're not getting expiring deals. So that's going to make it a little bit difficult, but less difficult than it would have been with a solitary $35 million a year contract. And uh, if you can get the same production you were getting elsewhere, then, hey, more power to you. Mavericks in the game shot, 45% from the field, 44% from three, 18 of 41. That is scorching. Meanwhile, uh, Miami... A lot less threes, only 27, but they cratered on that front, 26%, 42% from the field for Miami. Free throws are a little bit of a concern for Dallas. If they had made their free throws, this game's over. It's not even as close as it was. Uh, they go 21 of 33 at the line. That's just 64%. Compare that to Miami, 22 of 27, 81%. That's why this game was still close. Dallas did do a great job protecting the ball and sharing it, however. Eight turnovers against 27 assists. Miami was 12 and 19 on that, respectively. Dallas did get out-rebounded by 10. That is a little bit concerning, but Bam is going to make things difficult inside, so you're going to have to see how you can deal. You get seven blocks. Again, five from Maxi. That'll take care of that. And that is the gist of the game. Like that, that runs it all down for you. The ceiling is high with this team. Does it mean championship high? No, no. I like a lot of pieces they've actually got right now. That's not to say that they don't need to be open to moving several of them. I currently sit in the camp that they need to evaluate this offseason a sign and trade for Brunson because I think they can get better with different moves or different players in return that they could get shipping Brunson. And in Dinwiddie, now that you got him locked down for a few years, I think there's a little bit of a redundancy there. That's not to say that it's not fun to have all three on the court together. Hell, Oklahoma City used to play Durant, Westbrook, and Harden together. Do you think they struggled to get where they wanted to go? No, they went to the championship. They went to the finals. I digress. The point is that this team still has some moves it's got to make. But I do think this is a team capable, health permitting, of getting out of the first round. And they're fun to watch, man. Not just, like We've talked in the last few years of like, dude, this offense is so good. Oh, historically good. It's amazing. Oh, Luka, sensational. Luka legend. When you actually have a defense... And a defense that can go night after night against the elite offenses in the league and hold them under 100 points while still being now an efficient offense unlike the start of the year? Woo! Woo! Give me that. Give me that, son. I'll take that all day straight into my veins. I will take that all the time. So fun to watch this team. Very much uh, night and day compared to where I was mentally watching this team in December. Where I was just like, dude, this is this is hard. This is just work at this point. Now, this has become uh, something I look forward to immensely every single game. So, that's all my time for this video. Leave a comment. Let me know. How high are you on this team now? How much were you impressed by the two new Mavericks here? Can they keep this going? Can at this point we say it's not smoke and mirrors? Let me know in the comments. Like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!